Hello, dear adventurers, and welcome to another Needlessly Complicated 14. My name is Arietta. I'm having a bit of a low spoons day. I've had a migraine all day, but I really just wanted to make sure that we got to the event that's currently going on in Final Fantasy 14. Uh, from the 1st of March through the 15th is Little Ladies Day. And I wanted to make sure that we were able to get all of that done. Hi, Kate. I hope I feel better, too. <laughs> Let's see if my bot is working today. Uh, excellent. Uh, so if you have not checked out Strawberry Short, Kate, please make sure that you do. So she is an awesome variety streamer and a super sweet person who streams Monday and Thursday, I need to update my uh, bot, but uh, yeah, she does Mortal Mondays uh, where she talks about some death positive themes. Uh, the most recent one we discussed was jazz funerals, and she's not currently playing Final Fantasy IX. We finished that up and we all sobbed loudly <laughs> for hours. <laughs> Um, but yeah, make sure, make sure that you go check her out. She's wonderful. I appreciate the quiet typing. Um, so yeah, I, like I said, it's just kind of a bit of a weird day with a lot of head splitting and, um, I'm actually kind of laughing <laughs> because... I took my migraine meds early in the day, like you're supposed to. And so I'm just like, okay, it's been however many hours, how long until I can take the next dose? Because this one's a doozy. So I'm looking at the bottle <laughs> on my desk and looking at the active ingredients and how much there is of all of them and then at the directions. And it says... Do not take more than two gel tabs in 24 hours unless directed by a doctor. And I'm looking at how many milligrams of acetaminophen, aspirin, and caffeine are in two gel tabs. And I'm just like, oh, honey, that's breakfast. <laughs> um, That's not enough <laughs> to warrant such a stringent warning. <laughs> <clears throat> so that was that was fun. That gave me a good laugh. Uh but yeah, let's let's head on over. Um also my bot has a migraine today too, so <laughs> my bot is not talking about its name. Stream Elements had an updated OBS uh since yesterday, it looks like. Uh, but it had an update to stop the crashing with OBS 29. But now it's crashed within OBS 29. It's a good day for all. It's grand. Uh, so if I don't see an activity, it's because my activity feed is broken. And I do apologize. I will do my best to keep on top of it. But yeah... <laughs> okay, so Little Ladies Day. I'm actually going to pull up a thing. So, so actually today is Girls' Day or Dolls' Day uh, in Japan. So this is Little Ladies' Day in Final Fantasy XIV is based on... Girls Day in Japan. Let me just switch over the scene so that we're at least like looking at Final Fantasy. Um, and let me see if I can just pull us over. Oh geez, my headphones are super loud. I also need to make sure that Video Game Fables audio isn't doubling the audio. Hmm, so... Girls' Day is a religious holiday in Japan, according to 
uh, a quick Google search. Uh, it is celebrated on March 3rd every year. And uh, <clears throat> you set up a display of ornamental dolls representing the emperor, empress, attendants, and musicians in a traditional court dress of uh, the... I'm going to pronounce this incorrectly, and I do apologize. Uh, Heian period. Uh, and it's oftentimes just a day to kind of dress up and to just go into the culture around this time period, the culture around the empire, and uh, just to celebrate girls. And uh, their role in Japanese society. Uh, at least that's my best understanding. If uh, I'm missing any major points, please do feel free to correct me. It's been a while since I actually looked into the holiday personally. So that's only a quick Google search of that. But in Final Fantasy XIV, uh, they have Little Ladies Day. And having the red carpet and the sakura blossoms are also a pretty prominent part of the holiday as well. Hi, Craig. Welcome in. Let me see if my bot will behave a second time. If you haven't checked out Craig with three Gs, uh, please make sure to do so. He's another variety streamer here on Twitch. Uh, I wasn't able to hang out in your stream earlier today, and it was a bummer, but I hope you had fun you know, taking care of your little human girl with your robot wife. Um, I'm not doing great. I have a headache. <laughs> Specifically, I have a migraine, but we are going to do Little Ladies Day despite that. So... In Final Fantasy XIV, uh, the lore behind Little Lady's Day, it'll probably go into it a little bit, but it has to do with a specific princess from the lore and the history in Eorzea. So this is the Royal Seneschal. The Royal Seneschal has a new event in mind to bring smiles to all the princesses of the realm. This game is... I It's a delight. I wish that you could do the seasonal events. Like, I understand why they are within a season, but I wish you could do the events, like, every year. Because last year's Little Ladies Day event was hilarious <laughs> um but yeah let me just scroll into this man's face he's got his little fake mustache on from the fake mustache store it's very cute i'm convinced that lolifels cannot actually grow facial hair but they try to pretend like they can that's my headcanon anyway <laughs> Begging your pardons, good madam, but uh, you are an adventurer, are you not? If so, I should be much obliged for your kind assistance. I am the Royal Seneschal, and it is my honor to oversee Little Ladies' Day. In case you are unfamiliar, the festival celebrates all the maidens of the realm, and my duty is to see that each and every lady is treated as a princess. For this year's celebration, we are planning to distribute replicas of an antique folding fan to participants. Wishing to learn more about said fan, Miss uh, Al Aldiatha, a scion of House Thorn, has taken it upon herself to investigate its origins. Alas, she has ever had a frail constitution and is feeling unwell. Relatable. For now, she rests at, at my insistence, but passionate as she is about the celebration, I worry that she won't stay put like I didn't. <laughs> Thus I would turn to you for help. In order to take the burden off my lady, who is also a treasured princess this day, might I prevail upon you to assist with her investigation? Yes, yeah, sure. 
I'm truly grateful. Now, Miss uh, Aldiatha should be resting on a bench in the Gold's Court, so pray, seek her out there. I leave her in your capable hands. And Arietta Bot, even though they don't have their name up, is giving us a friendly reminder to take a sip of water because hydration is an important part of every adventure and to address things like migraines that I happen to have. Hi, Seki. If it's Little Ladies Day, shouldn't it just be a Lala festival? I'm sorry. I'm short compared to some of the other Viera. You might not be able to tell because this is a Lala's point of view, but I am short compared to other Viera and all Rogadin and some Highlanders and definitely the Ellison. This this bun boy is shorter, but that's that's beside the point. <clears throat> Uh, he said Gold Court, which I don't remember where that is. Steps of Thal. So, okay, it's just right up there. No. Okay. Okay, that's kind of hilarious. That Lala has a goose minion, but it looks like the Lala is being chased by the goose. <laughs> Geese are violent, but that is hilarious. Okay. Oh, my apologies. I didn't notice you there. Pardon me, but I do not believe we've met. Is there something you require? Hey, so the Royal Sh Seneschal said I should come help you out. The Royal Seneschal sent you? Well, I would be lying if I said that I didn't need the help. I'm in a worse way than I had realized. Relatable. I'm supposed to meet with two people as part of my investigation, but... Loath as I am to admit it, I'm in no condition to be up and about. As you may already know, I'm investigating the origins of an antique folding fan, the very one beside me, which I found in the Thorn Manor one day. Curious about the design, which is unseen in Ulda, I turned to the history books and discovered that it is a style used in the palace during the Thorn Dynasty. Further research revealed that Princess... Uh, Advaya, my ancestor who gave rise to Little Lady's Day, once used such a fan in a dance she performed at a royal soiree. It was a very beautiful. It was very beautiful by all accounts, and I should have liked to see it. Inspired by this discovery, I consulted the royal seneschal, and it was decided that we would make replicas of the fans as gifts for this year's celebration. However, when we showed the fan to the artisan we hired, he declared that, while undeniably designed in the Thorn style, it was crafted much more recently, no more than a few decades ago at most. Whoa, well then. This led me to wonder, who had this... Who had this fan made, and why? With my mother no longer with us, I went to ask my father, but he claimed to know nothing about it, and said no more. Though he married into the family, he is the, the present head of House Thorn. If he, even he does not know, then I have to seek the answers elsewhere. Additionally, if we learn how the fan was used during Princess uh, Advaya's time, I thought that we could share the knowledge during the celebration. Thus did I arrange to meet with the people who are versed in the history of our family. As I am now, however, I can scarcely stand without feeling faint. Relatable. Please stop. Why was this event designed for my migraine today? I'd like to know. Seki says the minion is called the Ugly Dugling, but it's so cute. Uh, then again, me and Burb. <laughs> uh, Kate's 
says, can I ask a weird kind of privilege to question about character skin color? You may. I'm curious uh, to know what you're curious about. Hi, Nikki. Are you back? Yeah, he's lying down on the heating pad. What about Curious Gorge? He <laughs> uh, says, I play a dark skinned Auron. I'm wondering if it's okay or if I should change it. I'm probably not the best person to ask that, but I also play a darker skinned Mikote as my main character. Um, that is something that after I started streaming, I was kind of like, hmm, I'm not sure. Uh, for me, I created my Mikote as a character that I found to be attractive, but also as separate from myself. Whereas my Viera is basically character creation as close to how I look in person as I could make her. She's even the same height as me. So, yeah, I totally understand why you would be feeling a way about it, because I oftentimes get that same way. It's just like, I don't know how appropriate that is or isn't, and I am not in a position to say. I was trying to research with not much luck, yeah. Yeah, and I understand what you're saying, Saki, but uh, it's also just like... <laughs> There's a lot that goes into it as so far as this is concerned, because there is so much in the way of uh, cultural appropriation as well as uh, just the appropriation of appearances and styles and fashion and all sorts of things that go into it. It's a lot more common to find people questioning it uh, in places outside of the countries and regions of origin because uh, uh, oftentimes so people who are immigrated to the United States or another predominantly uh, white or colonist uh, country are dealing with having been harassed and to other biases, bullying, and a lot of other things related to uh, the differences of their appearance, of their fashion, of their food, of their skin. So it's, it's a lot closer to home for them because it, a player character for a lot of people is kind of a costume that you put on and it's very important to separate the idea of a person who this is their lived experience and they cannot change it uh, to having something that you can just take off when you no longer feel like it or if you are uh, or if you are just logging off for the day so yeah it's something that I think about a lot <laughs> yeah it's something that I think about a lot um, and that again that's part of the reason why I created my Viera for stream to be like me in appearance and mannerisms and things like that um because even though i don't think of myself as my mikote i think of her as a separate entity like you would a main character in any of the other rpgs uh like my mikote is as much like me as i am uh like uh any of the other Final Fantasy protagonists from the mainline games. Like, I'm not Cloud Strife. And neither am I my Mikote. So yeah, it's it's <laughs> 
it's definitely something to explore and there's no one out there who can give you a definitive yes or no um so it's always going to be something that is a little iffy i think there's a very good video that was done um it was clipped from another streamer's stream uh I, i'll send the video to you kate uh after <laughs> after stream uh but i that is my most recent understanding of cultural appropriation versus appreciation as well as appearance-based character creation and that sort of thing but yeah it's something that i think about a lot so thank you for bringing it up it's it's definitely worth talking about um Yeah, Kate says uh, most folks are uh, talking about the opposite, like uh, being darker skinned in real life, but uh, playing a white character to, to avoid harassment. Um, I know it's a little bit late, but I hope you have a good lurk, Seki. Uh, have a good dinner. And no worries, so uh, my migraine brain will do what it will. <laughs> My aura is so pretty and I love her butt. Yeah, absolutely. And that's kind of how I feel about my Makote. It's just like, I love her. She's fun, but she definitely is an entity outside of myself. It's that I am playing her story, not my own. Whereas this one is different. Greg, please don't unfollow me. I, I'm sorry I'm not Cloud. Maybe I'll put on the strife gear just for you. <laughs> so you can pretend. <laughs> I will post my character in your Discord so you can see her because she is lovely. I would love that, and I will. I'll post a picture of my Nikote because she is lovely as well, and I I love sharing images of her. She's very pretty. But again, it's one of those things where it's just like, oh god, is this okay? Because I don't want to offend people. But it's also very much about context. Everything is context, and context gets lost really fast on the internet. Okay, I have sipped more water. Let us see what this lovely princess has to say next. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry to impose, uh, but might I trouble you to attend the appointments in my stead? I can do that. I'm in your debt. Now, you will want to take the fan with you. Sometimes my Vera has a really dead gaze, though, and that's a little disappointing. <laughs> I try to make a character look like me, but sometimes she just gets the goofiest faces, and it's just like, I... Mm. <laughs> Dang. <clears throat> Please show it when you meet the individuals in question. One is a reporter from the Mithril Eye who will be uh, at our Zenith Ossuary, and the other is a historian who will be at the Quicksand. It's not letting me post an image for some reason? I'll try later? Okay. Uh, if it's something on my end, I will check. It looks like it did. Nope, it's just a message. Hmm. Hmm. Let me check a thing. Uh, verified. Okay. You should be able to now. I think it had to do with some of the Discord permissions. Um, a lot of my Discord server is set up to be a little extra cautious on moderation because I can't be there 24-7 to moderate it. But yeah, it should, it should work now. 
should keyword. All right, so we do have an ad coming up. I'm going to let that run so that I'm pause. You're seeing the ad during travel time instead of actual conversations for the quest. So I'll see you guys in a minute and a half. If it'll do the thing. There it goes. I didn't need to go the whole way around. There was a door right there and I forgot. Old historian. Aww. I love her. She is very pretty. This grizzled historian is wearing, like, I understand the top half. The mustache is weird, but what's with these pants? Sir? <laughs> I don't understand. He does have a lot of things to carry. All right, now that we're back uh, from ads, everyone who was watching an ad, please explain this grizzled historian to me. Like, he makes sense from about the waist up. What is with these bright, bright pants? <laughs> I'm also curious about the facial hair, but I'll let it slide. Hi, Claire. Yes, he's wearing... Zipper cargo pants that are bright yellow. I don't understand. Uh, Claire Cares is another variety streamer here on Twitch that you should definitely go check out. She's been playing a renegade run of Mass Effect 2, but I think you were at the end of it on Wednesday, weren't you? I unfortunately didn't get to see the end of your stream on Wednesday. You did finish it. Awesome. Congratulations on getting through it. There were a lot of renegade choices you made where it's just like, Oh no, this is going to make things so difficult. All right, let's see what this grizzled historian has to say about this fan. Can I help you with something? I'm actually supposed to meet with someone here, but she appears to be late. Oh, uh, yeah. I have a Thorn Dynasty era folding fan, an antique folding fan. The Aldietha found within the Thorn Manor, crafted in a style used during the Thorn Dynasty. Hi, Zenny. Welcome in. It's good to see you. So, Zenny is yet another awesome streamer that you should definitely check out. I don't think that the other shout out is up yet, but we can certainly give it a try. Yeah, wait another 31 seconds before you give another shout out. Uh, Claire says I was so tense during the final mission cutscenes. Maybe uh, she saw your pants and ran. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you're doing well. We are doing little ladies day stuff for the event. Ah, so you've come uh, on Miss uh, Aldietha's behalf. 
And this is the fan she wished me to inspect. Indeed, it is a style hailing from the Thorn Dynasty. It is said that Princess, uh, Princess uh, Edvaya carried such a fan when she attended functions. In those days, it was considered a meat for noble women to cover their faces, to which end they carried folding fans on their persons. But as the legend of the Lost Lady would attest, Princess Edvaya didn't concern herself with social norms. Good on her! And at a royal soiree, far from using her fan to cover her face, she used it per to perform an impromptu dance. The Sultan and his retinue of uh, seneschals looked on aghast, but the guests were captivated by her performance, and erupted into rapturous applause when she finished. That dance came to be known as the Little Lady's Dance, and it is said you... It is said to have been passed down through the women of House Thorn. The fan you hold, I expect, was crafted for that very purpose. Curious, though, as the daughter of House Thorn, it seems that Miss uh, Aldietha should be aware of this legacy. In any case, I hope I was able to be of some help to her. Pray, pass along my regards. Oh, that's pretty. That's one of the Eden raid uh, shields, I think. Claire says, where can I sign up for Big Ladies Day? Uh, every day is Big Ladies Day. All of them. And Kate says, I think I might reinstate Naomi and Zenny's games this weekend. But Zenny says, uh, we good, chilling with Katie, hungry. Well, I hope you get something yummy to eat soon. Seneschal is such a good word. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. <laughs> Which I hope for pretty much everything. Hmm. Okay, so where? Level fifteen in paragons. Where are you? Oh. Well, I should have gone back the other direction then. Gosh. Uh, that's how I pronounce it. Okay, good. I trust your pronunciation better than mine. <laughs> Okay, so it's going to be over here by the Thaumaturgia's Guild. Okay, how do you pronounce that one, Zenny? I'm... And what does it mean? Suzerain? Okay, Mithril Eye Reporter. Where could uh, Aldietha be? Um, can I help you? I certainly hope so. This fan, Aldietha sent you, I take it. Very well then, I'll tell you what I know. When Aldietha reached out, about an antique fan she found, I was instantly reminded of a similar one I saw long ago. By her description alone, I couldn't be certain, but to see it here and now, there's no doubt in my mind. This fan once belonged to Althea's mother, Claudia. She was still half a girl at the time, fifteen summers old perhaps, when I interviewed her for Little Lady's Day article. That day she had this very fan with her. She was out of sorts though and begged to sit down and rest. As tired as she looked, I decided to cut the interview short and ended up writing about something else. I must say, I find it a little strange that Althea should uh, ask me about the fan. It belonged to her mother, after all. Surely she should know about it. Okay, but her mom is no longer with her, so... Unless you're wanting to do a seance or something, she's kind of out of luck. Be nice to the poor girl. Then he says it's like an entity or state uh, that reigns over another, uh, like a feudal overlord, pronounced a uh, no Suze Rain, if I remember correctly. Okay, cool. Bad thing, cool word. Uh, death to all kings, absolutely. Uh, 
Ah, so you are returned. Thank you for attending the appointments in my stead. So, did you learn aught of interest? Well, I found out this stuff. What? The fan was my mother's. And it was used to perform the little lady's dance. A, das a dance passed down through the women of our line. I... Forgive me, but I'm not sure what to think. I never knew about any of this. About neither the fan nor the dance. Why didn't my mother share the tradition with me? Um... Perhaps she didn't have the chance. Yes, I feel like that is the only plausible explanation. My mother succumbed to the illness of when I was little. Even if she had wished to pass on the tradition, she never had the chance to do so. Be that as it may, my father must have known something. I know not why he claimed otherwise and feigned ignorance about the fan, nor do I expect a, that he would willingly talk. Still, I want to know about the dance and about my mother. I'm sorry to impose yet again, adventure, but won't you help me find the answers? Yeah, I'll, I'll help. This means a lot to me, thank you. Now then, if my mother appeared at Little Lady's Day with her fan, it seems likely that she performed a dance there. On that assumption, I propose we look for those who knew my mother around when she was involved in the festival. For this, wealthy middle-aged folks seem a likely place to start. Chances are they at least cross paths with her in social circles. To that end, could you please try approaching affluent-looking individuals at the Sapphire Avenue Exchange and the uh, uh, Eshtem's uh, aesthetics. I shall await you here. I don't want to talk to rich folk. It's bad enough that we have to be in Ulda and deal with the monetarists. Okay, wait. No, that is an up arrow. My brain inverted that. For some reason, I'm just, like, down. That definitely is an arrow that goes down. No, not at all. Not even close. <clears throat> so, about this fan. What's that? Did I, do I know Claudia Thorne and the dance she used to perform? May I ask who's asking? A messenger on behalf of her daughter. Goodness me, to think uh, Althea has no idea. I was good friends with her mother, I'm proud to say, and would be glad to share what I know. She was quite frail, was Claudia, and constantly took ill. As a result, she seldom attended social functions, and certainly never performed the little lady's dance in them. She did, however, show it to me in private, and I consider myself blessed. It was so beautiful. I begged to learn it from her. She kindly taught me, and she would have uh, dearly loved to teach Aldietha too, I'm sure. It breaks my heart that she never had the chance. But if Aldietha is keen to learn the dance, nothing would please me more than to teach it, or substitute though I may be for her mother. She waits at the Gold Court, yes? I shall go and find her there at once. Yeah, as any... Kate said that you guys were, like, right af right in the middle of or right before Heaven's Word, I think? Perhaps? There's so much in the game now, and I'm still catching up on new content on my main. <clears throat> Zenny's character and my character are a couple. That's adorable! Sitting okay, there's just a weird little lollafell in a pig hat playing the bongos over there. Got it. We are cute lesbians. Ten out of ten. 
Okay. A thorn woman who once danced at the festival? I'm afraid I'm not familiar. Little Lady's Day has always been a common folks festival after all. If anyone were to know, I dare say it would be the head of the Thorn family. Tis under their auspicious... their auspices uh, that the celebrations take place. Okay, you didn't have to be rude. The bongos are so clear in my headset. <laughs> Perfectly normal occurrence, bongo lala. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, oh god, where is it? Where is it coming from? I'm going the wrong direction. Hello, little lala. Okay, and a restless nobleman. Where in the world did she disappear to? Hi, sir. W what? Did I ever see the dance performed by Claudia Thorne? As it happens, yes. Yes, I did. It was during a Little Ladies' Day celebration many years ago. Claudia was participating for the first time, and I had the honor of being her guide. By way of thanks for my company, she showed me the dance. Flourishing her fan, she moved with such majestic grace, I was left utterly transfixed. A dance so lovely it should be seen by all. Won't you perform it on stage at the festival? I suggested. And to my delight, she agreed, with a smile. But no sooner did she finish enrapturing the crowds uh, than she retreated out of sight, and all but collapsed to the ground. It was then that I learned of her frail constitution. Though I hadn't been aware, I felt no less terrible for making her overexert herself. I apologized profusely, begging her not to push herself ever again, and the sad look on her face when she nodded is something I've not forgotten to this day. Kate says, every time I hear Little Ladies Day, I smile so big. It's such a cute event name. It is. It's one of my favorite events that Final Fantasy does. I love it. Last year's was incredibly silly, but no less enjoyable for it. Ah, but look at me prattle uh, onto a complete stranger. My apologies. Now then, I was in the midst of looking for someone, so I shall excuse myself. God, I relate to this family more than I would like to. Um... Bye, Bongo Lala. Nope, not the Colosseum. Hmm. Oh goodness, there's more people now. Oh, there you are. A woman was here just now. She told me she was a friend of my mother's and kindly taught me how to perform the little ladies' dance. It's as beautiful as I imagined it would be, and I cannot thank you enough for finding this person. Now then, were you able to learn aught from anyone else? Yeah, there was this guy who feels really bad. So my mother once performed the dance before a crowd, but the exertion was too much for her. From what I've now seen, the movements may indeed be trying for those with poor health. Those such as myself. Thus did my father choose to keep the dance a secret from me, out of concern for my well-being. Or so I speculate at any rate. Lady uh, Aldiatha, thank heavens I found you. Rodolph, wh what are you doing here? What am I doing here? Beg your pardons, my lady, but you disappeared from the manor without a word. Both your father and I have been worried sick. But all's well that ends well, and it seems that you were on hand for the young mistress. As her seneschal, allow me to express my heartfelt gratitude. Now then, my lady, even as we speak, your father searches for you in the city. If you feel strong enough, let us seek him out together. I would set his mind at ease. E yes, of course. Thanks to you, I've discovered things I never knew about my family, and I would have you at my side when I meet with my father. 
Will you come with me? Claire says, I love the seated lady's whole look. It is good. I think I have that dress on my mane, but I would have never thought to dye it that color. It's beautiful. I have it in red and it doesn't look nearly as nice. Thank you. Your presence will give me the courage to seek the truth. Master Fortin, there should be somewhere in the Ruby Road Exchange. Please follow me. Well, okay. Where the heck do I go now, Ruby? So just outside. Cool. Okay. Oh, it was the same guy! You. You're the woman from earlier. I should have guessed you were the one who aided my daughter. I said what I said, not realizing you had come at her behest, but what's done is done. Allow me to properly introduce myself. Fortin Thorn. Head of the Thorn family, at your service. No more secrets, father. Why did you hide the truth from me? I couldn't bring myself to tell you, even at so that fan had and that dance hold fond memories of your mother. They are a painful reminder that she is gone. I couldn't bear to lose you as well, so please. Return the fan and forget about the dance. Father, I understand full well why you feel this way. Were I in your position, I would likely feel the same. But as much as I'm touched by your concern, I know about everything now. About my mother, about the fan, and even the dance. Very cute. Lady Aldietha, that was extraordinary. Where in the world did you learn how to dance so beautifully? An old friend of mother's taught me. Sorry, I'm tired and emotional. Hang on, I'm gonna take a sip of water. <clears throat> Despite all these years, she still remembered the entire dance. Down to the smallest flourish. Mother brought you great joy when she danced for you that day. On coming to understand this, I knew that I wanted you to experience that joy again. Aldiatha. Like I once apologized to your mother, I must now apologize to you. It was wrong of me to hide the fan and the dance from you, and I hope you find it in your heart to forgive me. If it is your desire to carry on the tradition, then I will not stand in your way. Thank you, but you know, Father, it is Little Lady's Day. Rather than an apology, is there not a more appropriate gesture for the occasion? Uh, 
as you say, my princess, as you say. I, Fourteen Thorn, head of the Thorn family, do hereby pledge to serve as your royal seneschal. Your every wish is my command. Except, perhaps, when I judge that you are overexerting yourself. After all, your highness's well-being is my foremost priority. I shall bear that in mind. Without further ado, then, my first wish is to instruct festival staff in the little ladies' dance, that we may share it with all who participate in the festivities. If that is your wish, then it is mine as well. On this day, all ladies are princesses, and everyone should by rights inherit the dance passed down in our family. I am too tired and emotional for this. I have a gift for you, adventure, as a token of my gratitude. If it, it isn't much, but... Please accept these instructions for the dance, along with a replica of my mother's fan. Now then, there's no time to waste. We must distribute these fans to as many people as possible and share with them the history of the dance. This will be a little lady say to remember. Oh, yes, it will. Exactly, Kate. All girls are princesses. Her greatest fan. <laughs> and the ballroom etiquette name is Fanfare. <laughs> An illustrated manual of the various steps and gestures that comprise the little lady's uh, dance. Use it to learn the little lady's dance emote. Okay, but do we have a cuter look for this? Hang on. Because, yeah, Black Mage is um, a lot right now. And... Terrible. All of these are bad. I think Dragoon is probably the best gear that we have for this. So. Uh, let's find a good place. See, so, aha. And. Please turn around. Posing characters is hard. Okay. And. There. Okay, so... Little ladies dance. And is this the... There it is. Very cute. Okay, so unfortunately, like our dear protagonist of the Little Ladies uh, Day, uh, I too am not feeling my best and trying not to overexert myself, which is a freaking bummer. But I told myself, you know what, I will get through uh, doing this quest, and if I was still feeling well enough to, I would do other ones, but... Look at the or orchestrion roll. Oh, uh, excuse me? Peach and cherry confetti, excuse me? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, what?
Um, um. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, what? That's incredible. I love it. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, like I said, I'm trying not to overdo it for myself because I am also not feeling well and the migraine is a lot right now. So, uh, thank you everyone for stopping by. I'm sorry that today is a bit of a shorter stream, only about an hour, but let's see if we can find someone to raid. Doopa doopa doo. Who's on today? You know what? Fanina is online. Uh, it's her birthday subathon. She is a she is a fawn VTuber, predominantly playing Final Fantasy fourteen. Let me just get that all set up. Um, but yeah, she's doing art and it looks like she's going to be doing some seal rock PVP today, but let's go, let's go give her a visit. So if you are interested in seeing more from me or heading on over to our discord to share your player character images, uh, there is the beacons directory link in the chat and on screen right now. Uh, and if you'd like to join me for the raid, it helps me, it helps Fanina, and it also gets you more channel points. So here are the raid messages, both regular raid and sub raid for subscribers. So yeah, again, thank you for hanging out with me for this shorter stream. I appreciate you very much. And I will get that raid going. And it sounds like it's perfect timing because a uh, maintenance crew has come back with machinery outside my window. All right, again, I hope you all have a good day, and I will be back next Wednesday to play more video game fables, and Friday to play more Final Fantasy XIV. We'll be getting to level 41 on Black Mage, and then continuing level 41 MSQ and the side quests. I hope you all have a good one, and make sure to drink water and get some rest. Bye, everybody.